Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about what should go inside an enclosure for a blue tongue skink. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And you're watching Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred, and animal focused. So guys, there are four things that are absolutely must-haves in the enclosure, and a fifth thing that I think would be, um, some people are gonna say it should be an, an automatic must-have, other people are gonna say it's a nice-to-have. Um, I've just added it recently, and I'll tell you why, and you can make your own decision, but let's get to those four things that are absolutely essential for welfare of blue tongue skinks in captivity that needs to be in the enclosure. That first thing is substrate. Um, I am not a fan of a flat paper substrate, a repti carpet substrate, uh, or paper towel substrate, unless it's for a sterile reason, for some reason for quarantine or sanitation if the animal's injured. Um, I've had an animal that was injured and they needed to stay in a sterile environment. It was much easier to provide them with a towel to, to live on and newspaper as opposed to um, substrate during that time, but it was temporary and not for keepsies. I'm not a big fan of paper as a substrate. I know many keepers uh, around the world that do, and um, the reason I don't think it's the best substrate is because it doesn't allow for a lot of the body tone and muscle tone of the movements, what it's like naturally to walk over something that's not just flat paper. Um, walking through substrate is a simulation of walking on like earth, <laughs> walking on the ground, not something that's flat, smooth, and um, kind of too much artificial. And I'm concerned that it doesn't get as good muscle tone uh, and joint care as a substrate. So I recommend a substrate. Uh, if you do the paper, I'm, I'm not dogging on you. I just don't believe that it's the best. Um, I think that measurably animals are more tone when they are on um, a substrate. Also, there's some evidence to show that like with turtles, now you can we're taking the principle of turtles idea and applying it to skinks, but they were measurably able to find less stress in turtles based on stress hormones um, in uh, eastern box turtles, and the link, uh, the citation will be in the description, where they had substrate. They gave them mulch and paper shreddings, and the animals were measurably better than just on paper. Um, and so I think that that could definitely also cross over and that principle could apply to blue stugs. We don't have evidence for it, so we can use the principle. The principle can be loosely applied. And I think it's pretty fair to say that a substrate will probably reduce some sort of uh, stress hormones in the animals. So a substrate's important. If you wanna know what substrates are best for what species, check out my substrates video. The next thing that I absolutely, you must have in there is a hide. An animal needs a hide. Saying that the enclosure is a hide is uh, philosophically incorrect. And, and that is my assessment of the idea behind a hide is that you have the option to not hide. And so it's to hide or not hide. That is the question. Isn't that what they said in Hamlet? No, it was to be or not to be. But no, to hide or not to hide, having the option to hide or not hide makes it a hide. When the enclosure is the hide, um, well, they don't have an option to leave their enclosure, so they don't have an option to hide. Uh, also, it, hopefully, you are providing light to your animals, whether you provide UVV or just regular light, they need some sort of light. These animals here have a light behind them that is shining bright so that it is actually not just ambient light, but actual light, even in these tubs. Um, Light is an important thing for circadian rhythm and understanding daylight cycle. They are not completely underground animals, nocturnal 100% of the time where they don't see light. So these are diurnal animals. Light is important for blue tongue skinks. So um, the enclosure should have some light and therefore it should have an opportunity to get dark too. 
on their own, not with us doing it for them, but them having that freedom because that's something that they have as a natural behavior in the wild is to choose to hide or choose not to hide. And that is one of the five freedoms for animal welfare is normal behavior. And one of those is to be able to hide. So hiding is essential. Now, what kind of hides? Um, I use a couple different methods. Uh, in the past, I was really a fan of um, a box of hay, actually. And because the hay is kind of, it's a grass and it simulates a natural grass and skinks will hide in, in, in a kind of a pile of, of grass that's fallen down or a bush or a grass that's kind of laying. They do move among that grass quite often. I've seen it in person in the, well, in video in the wild. I've seen skinks. Uh, in the wild doing this. And so um, that hay does simulate a burrowing behavior. It is um, very nice and it's different than a substrate. It's not to be a substrate, but it works well for a hide. I've seen many keepers do this as well and it's successful. The skinks seem to use it quite well. They can get completely dark. They can get nice and cozy in there and they have a natural burrowing behavior to it. Other options are more commercial hides. You can get those little plastic hides. I've chosen to do this for most of mine now, which I like, and it is a corrugated uh, PVC or a uh, corrugated sewage pipe thing that is a four inch T connector. So here's how it looks raw. This is what you would get at the hardware store. It's called a four inch sewage water hinge T, and I got it at Home Depot. And it comes like this, and then I just cut right here. I drill three holes, and then on each of these, and then I connect it just like this. And you can see where I've connected it with zip ties and I've smoothed those zip ties down so they're not gonna hurt the animal. And see, they're connected underneath here. And um, you can do any configuration you want. And the reason I like this as opposed to having it at its full size, like, like that, is because it's a lot, a lot of space here. Whereas the skink can feel nice and tight and snug under here. This is uh, low and slim line. I like it because it can also be washed and cleaned and sterilized as well as, um, you know, it, it has multiple openings, which animals in uh, hides typically in the wild, an animal will have a hide where there are two entrances or one entrance and an, an additional exit. Rarely uh, do animals make a one in one out type of um, hide for themselves simply because it's like ingrained in them from survivability. Especially mammals do that a lot where they won't even enter something unless there's an exit. That's why like live traps have to have an opening at the other end so the animal doesn't think it's walking into something that's enclosed. Um, it's part of their behavior. Um, so I like that there's multiple openings to this for the animal but they can feel definitely nice and dark and secure. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. But having a hide, you can also use like a cork flat or a cork round, uh, lots of different commercial type hides um, that you can buy. And as long as the animal can get under it and in it and get dark and feel secure, that's the goal. A hide is absolutely non-negotiable as far as I'm concerned for animal welfare for your blue tongue skink. You got to have at least one hide. So number three that you absolutely must have, that I believe you must have, is some sort of rock or rough surface in the enclosure. I, I usually use bricks, um, and not clay bricks, because those dissolve and are too soft, but stone bricks where you could actually file their nails as they climb over these. Now I have a couple in different sizes and heights. You can use regular old natural rocks too. They're just irregularly shaped where this is just put into a rectangular brick shape. So shape isn't really the issue, it's the material and giving them something rough to scrape on for their shedding and also for their nails and also gives them something to climb over so that it helps with conditioning of their muscles and keeping their body toned. So some sort of larger rock or brick that requires them to climb over. I use usually multiple bricks or multiple rocks in some of my enclosures um, depending on the animal and the activity level. So. A rock or something is very important for the animal welfare. Now the fourth absolutely hands down must have is a water bowl. Duh, right? Um, these guys need water. A constant fresh water source is 
absolutely essential to good hydration for your blue tongue skink. Um, I, in the past, I've used these little crock dishes, um, the ceramic crock dishes. They work great. They are uh, shallow, so what I would do in the past is I'll have it sitting up on a couple bricks, and then substrate will come up to the brick and cover up to the brick level. And then that way it's not getting constantly dumped into. Um, and sometimes they kind of burrow under. If it's just sitting on top of the substrate, they'll burrow under and spill it a lot. So that was one thing that I did. Um, as I grew, grew in number of skinks, I, I moved to um, deli cups and couplings. So I use a four inch PVC coupling like this. This is a four inch PVC coupling. And I can put this down and then I'll put this eight ounce deli cup inside and that won't tip and there's water in there. And then underneath, this is room for substrate. So I can bury this down into the substrate. And so it holds their substrate. They won't burrow under it because it's down to the bottom and it still keeps um, substrate from falling in as much. Um, I also, in the past, when shorter animals or animals who are like uh, in temporary quarantine that need, um, that need uh, a shallower access where they don't have substrate built up, I will use a cut in half one where uh, this also still sits in here, but it sits right up against the, the ground and keeps it from tilting. So I'll just take a, a saw and I'll cut this in half like that and use that. So um, there's nothing wrong with a crock or washable stuff. It's just uh, I was wanting something a little more convenient. And these guys, um, they're already recycled. So if someone's used this already for something else, turned into plastic, now I'm using it, and then I recycle it. And so it just keeps going on. And so that's not really that wasteful, if you will. Um, it does cost a little bit of money to have these, but I, what I spend in money, I'm saving in time from constantly washing a bunch of Crocs. Now, if you have a few of these Crocs, it's not a big deal. Um, I like the Crocs because they're clean, they're smooth, and they're easy to, um, easy to maintain. I've now used these also sometimes for little food bowls for animals that need a little bit of dry kibble to boost their, um, their food. So absolutely a water bowl. Some people use large Pyrex water dishes where the animal can completely get into it. I'm not a fan of that because um, there's a lot more cleaning involved with that. Not only do you have to take it out and wash it because the animal could have defecated in it, could have walked through their poop and then stood in their water and we don't want that contamination. Um, I don't like that but I know that there's several keepers that are very successful at that. That does help bump humidity if that's something you're looking to do. But um, I prefer the deli cup method. Uh, other folks do crock method. Other folks do other types of water bowls. Um, but having a constant fresh water source in your enclosure is absolutely a, a no-brainer mandatory. Okay, so this fifth thing that's like a nice to have, but maybe really should be a should have, but we don't have data on it yet, is um, either fake plants or real plants. Real plants is a pain in the epic butt, even even for me to have like a real plant in a pot <laughs> on its own under like a grow light is a lot of work. Uh, for some reason, my thumbs are definitely the anti-green. So, um, but having some sort of greenery in the enclosure and something that simulates um, plant life. So this sparked out of reading about those box turtles and looking at their substrate and realizing that just substrate and even newspaper shreddings helped box turtles. So it didn't have to be a real natural thing that helped them. It was even newspaper shreddings or paper shreddings. That type of substrate even calmed them down. So it was like form and function over actual like natural stuff. So artificial plants, in my mind, that means that artificial plants can function similarly. They're obviously not as ideal. However, um, the juice for me was definitely worth the squeeze to get fake plants and put them in as opposed to not to trying to fight real plants because then I would probably quit keeping animals altogether if it all had to have real plants because I can't keep real plants alive. Uh, even at the zoo, <laughs> we had like a greenhouse that we were constantly replacing plants with because they were dying and having problems getting dug up and it was an epic fight. Even the animal kingdom at Disney, they replaced trees in the elephant enclosures every single day because they put new fresh trees in, the elephants tear them out. New fresh trees in, the elephants, and it's, and I mean, if that's something you like, you go, go for live plants. You love it, you do it. You do you. I am not that way. I will never be that way. Do not want to. But I wanted my animals because they can see color 
And I realized I'm looking in my enclosure and going, gosh, it's just a bunch of brown and black. Blah. How boring. What kind of, that would just not vi give me vitality and feel like I am, you know, in the wild or even in something that has life. So I, I decided to bring green in because I know that even a green wall in a mental hospital will help calm people down. I'm wondering if it might have an impact on my animals. So I bought some greenery at home uh, at the Hobby Lobby store. At the Hobby store, um, there were vines on half off, and I cut the vines in half and washed them off real good, and then uh, kind of clumped them up and threw them in the enclosures. Skinks seem to uh, have responded positively there. They are definitely climbing in between them. They seem to have more activity around them. And it is a, a natural behavior to climb over and through foliage, which they do in the wild. So I was okay with that. It's just not, it's not real foliage, but um, it's better than not having anything and pretty pretty plain. And, and I feel like it, it enhances the animals. And this is just a recent thing that I've done. And um, I'm kind of excited about seeing it done. And... Um, so I'm not saying that it's a mandatory, but it's certainly a nice to have. Couldn't hurt. Uh, so adding some greenery for visual and then for it to have function where the animal can climb over and through it, uh, kind of cool. So guys, those are the five things that I think or recommend you put inside your blue tongue skink enclosure. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I appreciate you more than I think you know and I and more than I can convey through this video and so just just thanks guys i gotta give you a give you some love and uh as always guys remember opinion is not fact